Okay, here we go, hour number two. This is going to be very interesting. We're going to get to spend some time with a, uh, a young lady. She is a teacher or was a teacher in the L.A. Unified School District and also for, I believe, L.A. County. She is uh, an American patriot. She is an American citizen. She is an American who has rocketed to a great deal of notoriety because of her stand on the First Amendment. She is guilty, and I put that in quotes, of simply speaking her mind as a private citizen, not as a representative of the L.A. Unified School District or the other venues she worked with. It's very hard to hide the elephant in the dining room. And the elephant, of course, is world Zionism and the banking cartels. And all Patricia McAllister did, well, well, let me let you hear it. I'm going to ask the studios to turn this up a little bit, the volume on this particular uh, YouTube video is not very high, so but it's 18 seconds long. Take a listen. Here's what caused all the commotion. Patricia McAllister, I'm here representing myself, but I do work for the Los Angeles Unified School District. And I think that uh, the Zionist Jews who are running these big banks in our Federal Reserve, which is not run by the federal government, they need to be run out of this country. Well, I hope you folks were able to hear that, all right? She said the Zionist Jews... And the Federal Reserve, which of course is not federal, nor is it a reserve, she said that they all ought to be run out of this country. She wasn't talking about all people of the Jewish faith, all Methodists, Protestants, Catholics, or anybody else. She was talking about a particular group of bankers, the banking industry as it controls so very much of this country. Now, let me let me ask you to go back a little bit in your life, Patricia. When was it that you, you first began began to become aware of the crisis and the problems we face and who was directly responsible for the problems and the disaster that this country and its economy have become? Well, I think it's the uh, Zionist Jews who own the Federal Reserve Bank. Now, I personally felt it when they started cheating me out of my salary with the Los Angeles Unified School District. And that's when I felt an assault, a personal assault. I mean, money that I earned last year, two years ago, I'm just getting it. Money that mm-hmm. I earned in February, just got it in August. And I would go to the district office and talk to the payroll manager, and he looked me in my face after taking 30% of my salary and telling me they would give me the rest later. <laughs> and they didn't until a year later until I went on the web to a teacher's news group, which is an open a group, anybody can go on there, and I told them my story, and they mailed me a check in two weeks. Uh-huh. So, I mean, these people are criminals. So then it started, it started, to, it made me think. I said, wait a minute, what's going on here? And then other teachers asking me to look at their pay stuff. They couldn't understand all these deductions, uh-huh. deductions for uh, districts saying they overpaid them. I said, did the district write you a letter or call you and tell you they overpaid you? They said, no. I mean, so I saw just uh, blatant theft. And I know who's behind it, because most of them are Jewish, and I know that's how Jewish people operate. I grew up in Chicago at a time when the Jews were in the community. They were our merchants, they were the doctors, the lawyers, the dentists, Mm -hmm. everything. So they're like brothers to me or parents. It's not like they're foreign to me. I grew Mm -hmm. up with them, Mm -hmm. and I kind of know how they operate. So now that they're doing this with the school district, I said that I can't take it anymore, so I went out to the Occupy LA with signs about laying off teachers, and I want my money, and things like that. I did not go out there for that comment, but it happened to come up. So I have a long history with the Jewish people. I love them. I know we have hardworking Jewish people. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the Zionist Jews who own and control the Federal Reserve Bank. They print our money circulated in our economy and charge us interest, they take the interest and stuff their pocket. Now, what exactly. kind of nonsense is that? The American people need to know what's going on. And they also have financial interest in our news network, CBS, NBC, so a lot of this doesn't get into the mainstream news. People need to know why they're, why they're hurting, why people are living in their cars, why are they on the streets, who ripped them off of their homes. The Federal uh, Federal Reserve ripped them off. Okay, the banks did it. Wall Street. So I think if the American people, if they knew the nature of these people, these Jewish Zionist bankers, Americans would never think 
that their banks would just come and write up all of these false contracts and trick them and take their home. They, we trust our government. But if you don't know who's running your government, then you, 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 you're, um, you're vulnerable to being deceived. Mm-hmm. 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 And so I go back a long way with the Jewish people. I saw them bring in drugs into our community, the Jewish people. I saw them where they would have uh, black people lined up outside the doctor's office giving them um, prescriptions and uh, cough syrups and pills. I grew up in the black community. We did not have any drugs. And uh-huh. I'm not that old either. We did not have drugs in our community. Huh. And the Jews brought it in there, and right before Martin Luther King was killed and all of the burnings and everything, they ran out. But after that, then that's when they started pumping in the real drugs, the heroin and things like that. But they brought the drugs in. How do I know? I was there. Well, first-hand experience, uh, no yes, refusing I mean, that. I thought I was very, yeah. very young. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, very, very young. But well, I've this isn't anecdotal. It's not anecdotal. Right. You were there. Now, right. it's rather common knowledge that the ecstasy market, the international ecstasy trade, is headquartered in Israel. So they do have a long history of dealing with all kinds of things. Who owns the pornography industry? Well, it's it's not the Methodists or Catholics or Protestants. It's a it's a, a Zionist Jewish enterprise. So they're very very much entrenched in areas that actually are the primary weapons of destroying an entire culture and a society. Pornography to dismantle the morality of a culture, drugs to take down the uh, idea of abstinence and living a a clean and sober life. There are many issues involved here. So what you saw in Chicago, of course, was reflected in most other major areas of these formerly United States. Now, did you actually go back at some point and do a lot of research looking into the Federal Reserve Act of 1913, the efforts of Congressman Louis McFadden to, uh, to reverse the, uh, that horrible piece of legislation, which basically delivered this country into the hands of the international Zionist banking cartel headquartered in the city of London. Did you do any research into all that? Yeah, yes, I did. I, I, I'm a math teacher, but I still love to read and, and do research. Uh-huh. When I was growing up, on Sundays, I had to read the newspaper. My mother would get the Sunday paper, and I actually had to read it. Years later, I found out that she could barely read. My sister told me, you know, she, and I didn't know that. But so, yes, I had to stay up on current events. That's something my mother did. 